I'm going to present you some research that we did about how e-commerce can be used to provide a solution to the coffee paradox, focusing in uh, Costa Rica. This is the end of the presentation. We will have an introduction. Then we will discuss briefly about coffee production, processing, and distribution. Then we will talk about the e-commerce systems for coffee in Costa Rica. After that, we will make a, made an analysis. We'll make an analysis of these e-commerce systems and have some conclusions and recommendations. As the previous keynote speakers were saying, um, commodities is a real problem. But nevertheless, a lot of people still live and make a living um, producing commodities. Coffee is a good example. Coffee is produced in approximately 70 countries in the world. And there are 25 million farmers, mainly smallholders, and most located in developing countries that produce coffee. Not only that, coffee provides a livelihood to another 100 million people. So we're talking about 125 million people that make their living um, with coffee. Coffee prices are essential to improving living conditions. So as the previous speakers were saying, some of them are waiting for prices to go up and they have been waiting for a long time, particularly in low-income producing countries. And a study that we found said that a 10% increase in the price of coffee can reduce poverty by 6% points in the case of Uganda. The situation that we are facing here is that, as many commodities, but probably coffee is uh, quite critical, demand is increasing. In fact, there are estimates that 60, 16 billion cups of coffee are drunk every day, and that coffee consumption has doubled in the last 40 years. The coffee market is estimated in $70 billion, but still there, the problem is that prices, coffee, uh, uh, coffee prices behave like any commodity. The problem here is that there are too much competition, there's too much production, and unless something bad happens to Brazil and Colombia, coffee prices are expected to be bad. In fact, in Costa Rica, there has been, or there, has been, there was a crisis, and the number of coffee producers had decreased. But we have an advantage. The ones that remain in the business are the best in the business, and Costa Rica is um, trying to put itself in the gourmet coffee market. That is the one that we would like to discuss in this presentation. Very briefly, this is the global value change for coffee. As you can say, we have the farmers here. They basically, basically harvest coffee cherries, processors, do some type of processing. Basically, they take the skin out of the coffee cherries and control humidity and produce the coffee beans. And then, as you see, we have two branches. The most important for, for, for developing countries is to export green coffee. And this is done through export agents who either go to global traders or export directly to international roasters, which then uh, uh, sell their coffee to retailers and go to consumers in developed countries. This is the biggest uh, part of the coffee uh, value chain, but nevertheless, some of these processors uh, sell the coffee to local roasters who sell it to retailers, and these are consumers in developing countries. Few countries have a large uh, internal uh, market for coffee, so most goes through this side of the uh, value chain. In, in addition to the functions that they produce, like processes, roast the coffee, and other things, one of the important things is that these intermediaries exist because there are some problems, uh, and problems that face the um, uh, farmers. Uh, for instance, the processors do some determination on green coffee offerings, what type of coffee 
should be needed and in which, in which ways has to be prepared. Uh, it, they also handle some logistics in order to receive the coffee from the small market, from the small farmers, and then send it to the export agents. Some settlements in terms of prices, trust uh, that is very important in the coffee as we see in terms of quality, and they also have to have some regulatory uh, conditions that the country imposes. Export agents try to find a match between the coffee that is produced by the processors and the roasters. Uh, they also do some price discovery that is basically done in an auction mode. Uh, some logistics, settlement of prices and trust similar to this, and they also have to face not only the regulatory but also contracts to export the, 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 the coffee. The global traders are very similar to this except that the, they handle this from international harbors. Then the international roasters, the same for local roasters, uh, made a determination of the roasted coffee offerings and also uh, have some trust or uh, they have to uh, provide some trust about the quality of the coffee. And finally, the retailers do some price discovery that in this sense is fixed price usually and some logistic put it in the, their shelves in their, in their markets. As we say, trust is very important and this gives us about the uh, importance between coffee and quality, uh, the relation between coffee and quality. And there are two types of coffee. Mainstream coffee, that is the majority, 80 to 90% of the total coffee market. And in this case, coffee is considered an agricultural commodity. But uh, in, recently, in the last 30 years, or probably more, a uh, segment about specialty coffee has been uh, increased in importance. And the important here is that uh, if you produce a specialty coffee, you can obtain up to 25% or more in price uh, premiums at the retail level, but, although, uh, uh, but it only represents 10 to 50% of the coffee, total coffee traded. And the idea here is that this is an attempt to differentiate coffee and promote what is called decommodification. All these bring us to the, this problem is not only that prices of coffee tend to be low, but also the appropriation of rents is distributed in a, what we can call an unfair way. Developed countries, actors in developed countries, basically they, got, they get 70% of the price paid in uh, the international, uh, uh, that pay the consumer in developed countries. And developing countries only get 30%. And seven to 10% of the total price, it only goes to farmers. Which in a certain way we can say is very unfair because these are the ones that really creates the conditions for the quality of the coffee and they face the consequences of a bad crop. In all these, one of the problems that we have is that there are all, 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 all oligopolistic conditions in the global value for coffee, and you can see the numbers here. In developing countries, we have 25 million farmers worldwide, and in the developing countries, the World Bank says, but they, they, they didn't put the names of the, these companies, but we, we can guess who, who they are. There are four multinational corporations that control 45 of the roasting segment worldwide. Four versus 25 million, that means that uh, they have a lot of bargaining power this over here. And in here is interesting, but the governance of the global value change for coffee rests on the international roasters, not on the retailers, different from other uh, commodities or, or, or food, basically. Now, we will look at the e-commerce systems for coffee in Costa Rica. We focus the research in Costa Rica because we have access to the data there, and uh, we didn't have funds to travel to other countries and so on, but this is uh, for us, I think, quite representative because Costa Rica has been developing an, an interesting uh, market for coffee, particularly uh, gourmet coffee. We found two systems. One it is called the Cup of Excellence, with uh, uh, we can nickname coffee. And uh, it's a business-to-business -business e-commerce system used by farmers to directly sell especially green coffee to roasters in developing countries. This is uh, operated by a U.S. not-for-profit company, and the system is aimed at rewarding quality for uh, farmers. 
It focuses on what is called the organoleptic characteristics of the coffee trade. These are characteristics that can be uh, uh, test, uh, um, measured by human senses, like acidity, aroma, body, and flavor. It promotes national competitions for gourmet coffee in 10 countries, and Costa Rica is included among them. What we see is that this was the traditional GBC for coffee. We are taking away the uh, local part. We're only taking the, the international part over here. And what we see is that by the, using by the cup of excellence, we are basically, this, is, this, this system is taking the place of the export agents and the global traders, but also there is some disintermediation here by the farmers tend to process their own coffee, which means that they uh, get uh, uh, additional value to their products. Now we can see the prices, and in here, uh, at different to the commodity prices, prices tend to go up. This is the highest and the average prices for copies auctioned by the Cup of Excellence in Costa Rica, and the comparison with the futures market prices. The uh, green are the highest prices, the red are the average weighted prices, and this is the, the future market prices. As you can see, prices, at least the highest, tend to be very high. In fact, they ended the, 20, the 2016, and it ended at $52 per pound. And the average uh, in here, the scene is that you, you have to say that this is the, the, the best lot that was auctioned. There are other lots, and so we take the prices of the uh, lots and weighted by the, uh, uh, weighted by the quantity, we get an average price. And in all cases, like in uh, 2011, uh, the, the average prices as well uh, uh, are above the future market prices. So as you can see, this is a way, interesting way, for uh, farmers to uh, get better prices. There is a, a difference in prices. In fact, the highest bids obtained in the coffee and the future markets range from 660% in 2011 to 3,215 in 2015. That it was the last day that we used the data. We, do, we, we didn't update the paper yet for 2016. And vary from this year was an atypical one in a certain way, but to 552% between the weighted average and the same benchmark price of the market futures. The problem that we have here is that the, there is a low uh, amount of coffee traded in fact, the lowest amount traded was 6,199 pounds in 2009, and the highest was 95,266 pounds in 2011. Just to put it in perspective, last year, uh, this is the number of pounds, and it's only 0.1% of the total coffee export from Costa Rica for the 2014-2015 crop. Nevertheless, it makes an improvement to some uh, coffee uh, growers. The other system that we found is, is a system that the uh, roasters, Costa Rican roasters themselves are, are um, setting up and the, what we have seen here is that 14 out of the 63 Costa Rican roasters, 22%, sell coffee through their own B2C e-commerce sites. This is based on something that uh, an author uh, claim, and it's not, uh, uh, we can, it's, it's an obvious thing in a certain way, that higher margins can be obtained if roasted coffee is exported directly to customers. In here, there is a focus on geographical indication and or eco-sustainable labeling, an emphasis on high quality Arabica blends. Uh, the, this focus provides evidence that most of the coffee sold through these systems are specialty coffee rather than mainstream coffee. If we take the uh, GBC for coffee, what we are saying is that now we go from here to here, the roasters, and this through the e-commerce side goes directly to the consumers down here. These are some price difference that we found in the sense that we took some brands sold 
through e-commerce site and through a supermarket um, chain in, in San Jose. Of course, we didn't want to do a very econometric uh, uh, study just to get the sense if there was some difference or not. And we found out that the difference between how uh, this brand is all in this supermarket chain and how it's all in the EC side goes from 35.60 to 97.04%. Not as high as in the other case, but still there's some difference. The difference can be uh, higher than we presented here because we took the price that, that the uh, supermarket sells the coffee not the price that the supermarket pays for the coffee to the consumer. And the question is that we asked the people there, in fact, one, one day that we were doing that, we were thrown out of supermarket because they say we were doing some illegal research. But anyway. Analysis of the systems. This is what we have found out about the, the two systems, the coffee and the roasters economy systems. In here, there is a grading. Uh, the, um, the farmers are doing additional functions like the processing. In here, there is an in sector intersectoral uh, upgrading. The ability or the capabilities that the roasters, Costa Rican roasters, are using to sell uh, specialty coffee in Costa Rica are being used to sell uh, in another uh, regions as well. Focus organoleptic characteristics, as we mentioned. In here, we use non organoleptic characteristics like brand, geographical indications, and eco-sustainable uh, uh, eco labels. There's some disintermediation here, the traditional process go out, but also there's some cyber mediation, new electronic intermediary replaces export agents and global traders. Here, there's this intermediation, the export agents and global traders and retailers disappear, and re-intermediation, re local roasters substitute international roasters. The effect in the GBC, no changes in territoriality or governance of the global value chains. There is a change in territoriality, territoriality here because then the roasted function that before was done in developed countries, now is done in developing countries, but no change in the governance. Increase extraordinary for farmers, high, but not extraordinary, but for roasters. The effect in the coffee paradox, benefiting in prices increases is limited. There is a reduced number of farmers that participate, which favor a search for scarcity by roasters that have been acknowledged by some researchers, and this is an unscalable development approach. International roasters benefit the most. No, it's not that the farmers, the international roasters themselves benefit from that search for scarcity. In here, we don't have any evidence that the farmers will benefit. Most likely, the roasters will benefit as in the other case. Conclusions and recommendations. The two types of e-commerce systems used in Costa Rica to export coffee international are able to generate higher earnings for local actors in the GBC, in what cases the farmers, in other cases the roasters, but none of them change the governance of the GBC for coffee. We have found out that this is the main problem. Without such a change, roasters will be benefiting the most, either they are international or local. Governance is a consequence of the structural conditions in the GBC for coffee. In fact, this is done in the 19th century, that make customers close to roasters, hardly establishing these customers a connection with farmers. In fact, one author claims that there is not currently a market in which farmers and consumers relate in a direct manner since they operate in opposite sides of the GVC for coffee. We can see it here. The farmers are basically dealing with roasters at that level, and the consumers are dealing with the roasters. So the, in fact, there is a market for green coffee and another market for roasted coffee. We hypothesize here that if e-commerce were to be used to provide a direct connection between farmers in developing countries and consumers in developing countries, developed countries, a better solution to the coffee paradox will be obtained. But of course, this will need a new e-commerce systems at creating an electronic market through a cyber, cyber mediary similar to the Cup of Excellence for selling Costa Rican roasted coffee directly for farmers to international uh, consumers, but focusing on gourmet coffee. In fact, we are trying to test this and try to develop a system. This is just 
something that is underdeveloped. There's no graphical design involved yet, so please do not criticize the design. But this is something that we are trying to do to provide information about a farm, the technical information, uh, Google Maps, some pictures, probably videos here, the coffee that they produce and the awards, no? And uh, we are in the process of developing that with the help of the uh, Association for Fine Coffees in Costa Rica and particularly the winners of the Cup of Excellence in Costa Rica. Thank you very much.